Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis, the channel where we look at complex organic chemistry and explain how it works. Last week, we started the synthesis of lycanosidine B, a lycopodium alkaloid with an oxygenated amine type phosphatamine core. In the last episode, we looked at the construction of a bicyclic intermediate featuring an alpha cyano allyl enol. To continue the synthesis, the next step was to react this in a Claisen rearrangement. Heating the allyl compound in toluene promoted a 3 plus 3 sigmatropic rearrangement. In this reaction, two double bonds migrate, one sigma bond is broken, and a new sigma bond forms. This happens in a concerted six member transition state with a chair like structure and produces a ketone and a new alkene. This product is thermodynamically favoured as the carbon oxygen double bond is stronger than a carbon carbon bond. The authors now turn their attention to removing the cyano group. To this end, they use lithium naphthalamide. This can act as a radical reducing agent. Successive radical reductions removes the cyano group from the molecule and generates a lithium enolate. The formation of the enolate is reversible and this allows for the equatorial product to be formed. This is more stable as it does not suffer from 1-3 diaxial interactions. Moving forward to prepare the precursor to the next cyclization reaction, the Bach group was first deprotected using TFA and then two crotal groups were installed using crotal bromide. The first crotalation reaction was carried out at room temperature while the second required elevated temperatures. The function of the second crotal group is to mask the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. The authors found with the lone pair available to react it would poison the catalyst used for the cyclization. With the crotal groups in place, the authors could now perform an enine domino metathesis sequence. They used Grubb's second generation catalyst to perform this transformation. Dissociation of a ligand from the complex allowed an alkene to bond in its place. A 2 plus 2 cycloaddition to the methylene group present on the complex formed a four membered metallocycle. A 2 plus 2 cycloreversion then occurs, which leaves the substrate bound in the methylene position and a newly formed olefin. This is displaced by the alkyne, and then another 2 plus 2 cycloaddition occurs. Like before, a metallocycle is formed, and this reverts, which forms a new ring with a double bond present, and the crotal group bonded to the metal complex. Another metathesis reaction involving a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition and reversion from the metallocycle completes the sequence to form another ring and regeneration of the catalyst. Overall, this transformation has formed two new rings to complete the tetracyclic phosphatamine framework. With the tetracyclic framework complete, the synthesis now entered the oxidation and reduction phase. The quaternary amine was first reduced to remove the unwanted crotal group using sodium sulfide. One of the alkenes present in the molecule then underwent a pain oxidation. This oxidation is similar to the Prilazeyev reaction which uses MCPBA. However, in this reaction, trichloroacetonitrile is reacted with hydrogen peroxide to produce the oxidizing agent. This reacts in a concerted mechanism with the double bond to install an epoxide group. This reaction produced a single isomer, and we can explain this selectivity by looking at the transition state. The carbonyl group is capable of acting as a hydrogen bond acceptor. This directs the oxidizing group to the top face of the molecule, where it will only react with the double bond from the top. An unwanted side reaction of this oxidation was the oxidation of the tertiary amine. However, 
This was reduced during the next reaction, which was catalytic hydrogenation, using hydrogen gas and palladium on carbon. The first hydrogenation used a short reaction time of three hours. This added a hydride to the double bond, which promoted the opening of the epoxide ring and the migration of the double bond. The newly produced alcohol was then protected with a TES group and the remaining double bond was hydrogenated using similar conditions. However, this time the reaction was conducted for 20 hours. The stereochemistry of this hydrogenation was controlled by the TES group, which sterically hindered one face of the molecule and only allowed the hydrogen to add from the opposite face. In order to install a primary alcohol, the authors used a Mukayama aldol reaction. Reaction of the carbonyl group, the TMS triflate, produced acyl enol ether. This is able to act as a nucleophile, where it added to the formaldehyde electrophile, which was produced from paraformaldehyde in reaction with scandium triflate. The TMS group is cleaved upon aqueous workup to restore the carbonyl group with the newly formed methyl alcohol at the alpha position. This reaction was stereoselective, owing to the steric hindrance from the TES group. At this stage of the synthesis, some protecting group manipulation was required. The TES group and the secondary alcohol was deprotected using tosylic acid, and the primary hydroxyl group was protected again using a TES group. The TES group selectively reacted with the primary alcohol as it is more sterically accessible. The TES group present on the primary alcohol was important for the next reaction, which was a reduction using borohydride. The TES group serves as a steric shield to block the top face of the molecule, allowing for the hydride to be added in a stereoselective manner from the bottom face to produce the alcohol in the equatorial position. The oxidation uses two azoadamantane N-oxyl, together with a copper-1 bipyridyl complex. Reaction of the N-adamantane with this copper species oxidizes it to copper-2, which then binds to the substrate. The N-oxyl is reduced to an N-oxide radical, which can react with the bound substrate and oxidize it to a ketone, together with the reduction back to an oxyl and regeneration of the copper-1 species. Several aspects of this oxidation are difficult to explain. The first is the role of DMAP in the reaction. I haven't shown it in the diagram, but dimethylaminopyridine was also added to the reaction. This can act either as a base or also as a ligand, binding to the copper. The second challenge is explaining the selectivity of the reaction. There are two possible secondary alcohols which could have been oxidized. However, this reaction was selective for the oxygen on the five-membered ring. If you can explain this result, or the role of DMAP in the reaction, let me know in the comments down below. With the ketone group in place, it was a trivial matter of deprotecting the TES group with tosylic acid to produce the target like an osidine B. This produced a final yield of 1.8 milligrams in 30 steps from the starting triflate. It was a highly original synthetic strategy that employed domino reactions to generate two rings in one step, and also a highly selective cyclopropanation followed by a ring opening and diastereoselective reduction. This strategy enables easy access to the phosphatamine type tetracyclic skeleton, which could be used to synthesize other members of this alkaloid family. So that's everything for this synthesis. Please like and subscribe, and if you have any molecules you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments down below. Next week, we'll be looking at the total synthesis of Leonucatal by Margaret Brimble and Daniel Furkert.